I, I can't imagine some dude coming to my house and bringing me six cows for my daughter. <laughs> but, you know. No, it would be, it would be 50. Oh, 50, 50. cows. Six. When we return, we get There's the... A certain amount of people which wants to create a nation of unity. And then there's us, the Boers. We don't take part in this, and we're not going to. And we're not going to go away. And we're the rightful owners of this land. <laughs> so, uh, well, So that doesn't mean we doesn't see the sunshine over other people, okay? If you go back in history, you would actually see that the Boers have negotiated with the tribal chiefs and the kings, and we, we have, we have uh, see them as equal, and we have uh, give them their, their uh, peace, okay? Uh, now... Now go on, we can hear you. If we want to uh, share one country, we must first accept the realities. Help me understand something. If we're gonna live in the same country, but you don't want unity, how do we do it? We, we never wanted unity. No, 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 I, I, I accept what you're saying. Okay. I accept that, that's what you said. Yes. What I'm saying is, then how do we live in one country? Oh, that's very easy, okay? We can uh, li live in this country happily if we have proper borders. So if if the Boers have their land, mm -hmm. and the Tswanas have their land, and the Zulus have their land, we do not want to mix. Leave Jobik for the cosmopolitans and all this uh, type uh -huh. like, like... Sounds like a party. <laughs> yeah, uh, properly, yes. And okay. and all that. All right. then Tell me how do you feel if uh, your daughter decided to marry a black man? Mm. How do you feel about that? I cannot see that happen. <laughs> no, I'm saying uh, if she wanted to. No, then it's her choice. Then she go off in life with her choices and she left with it. I don't uh, see you as a lesser person. I only see you as a different person than my culture. And I love my own. When you're looking at uh, the South African uh, coat of arms, it talks about diverse people unite. It is not a suggestion, it's, it's a command. It's like diverse people unite. And I think we actually forget that this is what we're supposed to do as South Africans, that we're supposed, yes, the acknowledgement of our diversity is there, but we have to unite All right. in our diversity. Yes. So then we get the final word from our audience and our panel. This is The Big Debate. When... Um, Desmond Tutu said the white people must be glad they're not killed. Why didn't anybody say anything? And why didn't anybody say that's racist? And say, how can Tutu say that? White people must be glad they're not killed. Because it's true. Because it's true. It's true. My question is based to Sune um, about the Red October. I actually don't understand why white people have tend to be rhinos that you guys are in danger. You need to accept what you have done to the country and you need to sit down and allow us to heal. We, we have accepted what you guys have did. Because what is the whole point of this rainbow nation uh, the guy said, this is their land. This is not your land, sir. You need to wake up from wherever you're dreaming and reality, face reality. Here's a, here's a thing for us going forward. We need to substitute intolerance with love. We are not a people. We are a nation of individuals. If we are a nation, we need to stop tolerating, but we need... We really need to love each other. It's interesting when I look at your country, which has only got about 11 tribes, while Kenya has about 45. And to be able to put a nation together is quite a mammoth job. And you must admit that uh, 300 years is a long time to undo in 20 years. The question is, what are we going to do? How are we going to implement a program that is going to unravel this over a period of time? As the young people, we are colorblind to begin with. Um, I have white friends, I had colored friends, I have Indian friends, I have friends from all spectrums. 
And when we get together, the most important thing is enjoying an, an, an experience of euphoria, enjoying an, an authentic experience of love, excitement, you know. We don't care if you're black, if you're white, where you come from. What's important is, 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 is what's in here. What can you give me that I can use to grow as an individual? At the same time, what can I give back to you? Yeah. You understand? Now, the thing that is actually happening is quite saddening for a person like me because it feels like um, the older generation is trying to resuscitate a, 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 a apartheid, which is a, a giant that is in a home. We, we, we don't I don't believe that the Rainbow Nation project is dead. I believe it's limping. Yes. What's important is that as the nation, we need to come together and say, yes, fine, this is where we messed up. How can we work together moving forward? There are some people that are not simply willing to t partake in the project of creating this kind of country that we want. And as young people, which young people have spoken about here, we have to say, if those people are not willing to work towards building the kind of unity that we want in this country, then we must leave them behind. And we must not be apologetic about doing that. But I also want to make sure that when we leave this room, we don't take people that have been saying that they're speaking as somebody as a board or whatever, and assume that they are speaking on behalf of all Afrikaans people in this country, because yeah. then it's going to take us backwards. Yeah. People will continue to be angry. People will continue to be intolerant for as long as there's these disparities economically. Socioeconomic transformation first, and then yeah. questions of, trans, uh, of reconciliation of peace will follow after just this. Thank you. When we return, the final word from our panel. to the big debate on racism. Let's get the final word now from our panel. When we talk about race and reconciliation like we do today, it often feels to me as if people invent a past that never existed. And I think that it's very important for everyone to be a little bit self-reflexive and to be honest with themselves first. And especially as a white person, maybe with, a, with just with a, a tinge of humility at the same time to think what actually happened in the past. If we don't get to that point of acknowledging what happened in the past and the wrongs in the past, there cannot really be true reconciliation. Thank you. Sinead? I'm, I'm, I'm not the philosophical one and, and not doing the nice speeches, I'm a, a realist. <laughs> and the reality <laughs> is that after 20 years, this country is in serious trouble, it's burning. And we do not have another 20 years to have nice philosophical uh, discussions about who should be giving what and apologizing for what we need to get on with it and then um, the lady that started her sentence was saying I'm a proud strong Sutu woman that's exactly what I wanted her to say I didn't diss her culture I said that's your culture keep keep it and look after it but allow us ours as well because if in this country i start a sentence by saying i'm a proud africana white woman i'm in trouble level the struggles that we are dealing with in south africa are not singular they are global struggles people of color women have been systematically oppressed for centuries the work that we're doing today to try to break this down is is not just important work for ourselves for our continent but it's important work for the world and um, i'm grateful to have been a part of this experience south africans are very passionate we care about our country and it's evidenced by the the nature of the conversation today Uh, it feels like it's, I mean, the subject matter needs something, uh, almost like a moral figure. We don't have Mandela anymore, but someone of that caliber to stand up and say, actually, we're all part of one nation. And those who want to stay behind and live in the past, fine, we will leave them behind. But at some point, they will come and join us because what the, where they live is not feasible. <laughs>
one of my favorite poems is by a, a woman named June Jordan, and she talks about the fact that we are the ones we have been waiting for. And I think that uh, this idea that there are a group of exceptional people who led us to democracy, and now they're gone, and we are sort of left uh, leaderless and looking for someone to replace them is, is deeply problematic. What's clear from this conversation is that everyone is big on vision and very short on details. Yeah. How is it that we are going to create this path to this wonderful future? And what you need for that, in part as leaders, of course, but I think you need um, to be thinking about it consistently and constantly. We had the TRC for five years. It wrapped up its work, it's sitting on shelves. Mm -hmm. I think we need to really think about a national initiative where it is somebody's business every single day, in schools, in churches, in communities. Someone must be tasked with the business of thinking through and dealing with racism in all the ways in which it affects our society. Most importantly, the structural ways. Because in some ways, this conversation is a hijacking of the real issues. The real issues are that people are poor, and most of the people who are poor are black. Mm -hmm. That's it. Mm -hmm.